Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial where I'm going to show you our workflow of the combination between Adobe Animate and Adobe After Effects. I see a lot of animators that work with Adobe Animate, only work in Adobe Animate and I'm going to show you how to really quickly and easily convert that to After Effects and keep it really light, no PNG sequences, no MP4s with green screens that need to be colored out, I've seen people do that as well. It's going to be really light with Swift files and I'm going to show you how to make that work and I'm gonna show you all the upsides that that has uh, because it's again it's really light and you can do it's really versatile so bear with me and let's do this I got a senior from detective Pikachu Noir and he says let's go the character Pikachu in this case has been animated in animate but the background has been done in Photoshop with multiple layers and did some overlays to get that yellow glow I added some dust in After Effects I added some shading you see that rim lining those are all things that I would not recommend doing in Adobe Animate. So I'm going to show you guys the workflow and let's start in Adobe Animate. So I got Adobe Animate here and uh, well Pikachu is a little uh, a little cut off right there on the bottom but that's fine because he was going to get cut off anyway. That's actually a good thing and I'll show you in a second in Adobe Animate when you're starting to use layer styles on a character or on an animation. As you can see right here if I scrub through this you can see the animation and obviously Pikachu is animated with vectors except for that little coffee cup that was done in Photoshop and you can see that gets blurry if I zoom in but that's all right that's an exception in this case but normally we do not add backgrounds in Adobe Animate we add them in After Effects so what I'm gonna do is I want to export this and again like I said uh, I'm not gonna do that as an mp4 or as a PNG sequence so I'm gonna go to file export movie and not video and media if I click export movie, I'm gonna get a little pop-up right there. And you can see that it's on default as a PNG sequence, but we're not gonna use that. I'm going to save it as a Swift file. I'm gonna put it right here in this folder. I'm gonna save. And as you can see, the export was really fast. Resolution does not matter in this case because it's vector. So if I'm gonna go to After Effects right now, I can import it right here and I spot the Swift file right here. You can import the whole .fla file, but we're not gonna do that. It's really hard to update that. If you save in Photoshop, it will actually update in After Effects. If you save the .fla file, the work file, it will actually not update in After Effects. But instead, I'm going to import this Swift file right there. As you can see right here, it imports. And for now, I'm gonna keep it like that. And I'm going to grab my background so if I go to Photoshop, you can see that I uh, got some uh, overlays here, some light, um, the chair and the wall. I also put in some overlays and that's something you don't want to do in Adobe Animate. Don't use blend modes in Animate. It will slow down your project dramatically. Do that in After Effects. So I'm going to save this real quick and then import that as well. Import, file, grab that PSD right there. Retain layer sizes, editable layer styles is all good. And there we have it. I got a composition. I'm going to open that composition. And you can see I got those layers exactly as in Photoshop. I'm going to turn those lights and overlays on as well. And in this case, I'm going to drag that Swift file right under the light. Uh, obviously, it's a little small. Now, if this would be a PNG sequence and I would scale it up, it will eventually get blurry. Look at that. It will get really blurry. It looks bad. But it's not. And it's a Swift file. So if I click this little icon here, this little sunshine icon right there it will become smooth again there we go see now it's smooth and now it's not now it's smooth so let's keep that on and that file is super small too look at that 106 kilobytes that's nothing compared to a png sequence which would be like several mbs at least especially 4k resolution and for this the resolution does not really matter so he's a little big let me scale him around a little bit there we go and the beautiful thing is I can still like add a bunch of stuff to him. For example, I can say, let's do a layer style. Let's give him a drop shadow. So he drops like a little shadow on that chair. Oh, drop shadow, up the size a little bit, make him move off a little bit. So it looks like he's a little bit more in that chair. Obviously he's gonna cost a shadow there as well, but let's ignore that for now. There we go. So this is without the shadow. And this is with the shadow. You see a little bit there, I'm just gonna move that real quick so there we go that looks good so i can keep adding to that maybe i can even add some effects to him so for example i can add an effect to this uh, let's do a u and saturation there we go maybe make him a little darker and a little bit more saturated i could do that if i wanted to i do some color correction i can do all that 
And if I want to make an update right here, so maybe his uh, tail will start up a little bit more, right? Like there, All right? Instead of like overriding that PNG sequence or the video, etc., I'm just gonna go file, export, movie. I'm gonna press enter. Do you want to replace it? And I will say yes. And in this case, it will say like error creating a Swift movie file because it's being used by After Effects right now. If that happens, really simple, turn him off right here and then do it again. File, movie, and then overwrite him and say yes. And it will overwrite. And then can turn it up right here. And you can see that his tail will now start up a little bit more up. And that way, if you want to make changes to the animation, you can do it really fast. And if you get that little pop up like, hey, After Effects is using that right now, just make sure to turn it off in After Effects or maybe even close to composition temporarily and then overwrite it and then open it up again. So I could even duplicate this layer and then maybe mask him out a little bit right there. Just mask him out. That's where the light would be. I'm going to take that and turn off the layer styles real quick and maybe increase his lightness by a lot. There we go. A lot of light coming through that window. Maybe a little more saturation. And I got the mask right here. That's a mask feather. So now he's lit up in the front even though that's like a single different layer. And if I update one, I'm gonna update that all. Can you even set that to a different blend mode? Like let's say overlay or maybe add. That's a little much, but for the example, let's do it. So right there. So if I update one Swift file, I'm gonna update them all. And it's really quick, it's really light, it's really easy. It's even possible to export this in several parts. So for example, if I want his arm to be a separate export so it can actually cast a shadow, I can just turn this layer off so I can check if it looks good and then set this layer to a guide. Now that arm layer will not actually export. If I set it to a guide, it will not export. So without the arm, I'm just gonna go file export movie. I'm gonna say dash body. And then I'm gonna do the exact opposite. I'm gonna unguide that and unhide that. And I'm gonna guide the rest by selecting them all, right click, guide, and turn them all off. See, I got the arm right there. There we go, it's just the arm. So I'm gonna go file, export, movie. And instead of calling them body, I'm gonna say arm. Now in After Effects, I can import both the body and the arm, drag them both in, turn the original picture off real quick. And I can simply parent this to the other layer, turn continuous restoration on for both, and I can scale them up again. But this time I actually have control over the arm and over the body. So if I wanted to have the arm do a drop shadow on the body, I could do that. At some distance, at some size, Maybe do it down a little bit. There we go. And now I got the shadow on the body and the coffee cup right there. The only downside is that if I want to update this animation, I have to do it the same way again. So I have to export that arm again and I have to export those fingers again. It's a rare occasion where you actually export it in several layers, but you can do that if you want to. Although it is what we do a lot. So for this example, let me unguide those real quick. And there's a couple of rules on using Swift files in After Effects. And one of them, everything needs to be a graphic. If this would have been a movie clip, and maybe you use movie clips because you get some extra functionality. But if there's animation inside a movie clip, it will actually not play when I scrub through the timeline. See, that's a movie clip now, so it will not play. The rule in After Effects is that if it moves in Adobe Animate, if I scrub through it, it will move in After Effects. So let me put it back to graphic. Now, if for some reason, you're, um, you're importing your Swift file in Adobe Animate and it's working just fine here. I scrub through it and it works just fine. And if I go to Adobe After Effects and it will not work there, it will actually just show a still image. Then, well, for example, let me just add a camera right here. And oh, it doesn't matter if I use the camera, but there's a camera right, layer right now. And if I export this, let me just export this real quick with file, export, movie. And I look at the Swift file in the composition right now. Hey, it's not moving but it's moving just fine here. So what happens in Adobe Animate, as soon as I add a camera, that's an advanced layer. And if I export that to a Swift file, Adobe After Effects will actually just show me the first image. There's a really easy way to fix that. If I go to File, Publish Settings, right there, I can actually click Optimize for After Effects. Why this is not on by default, I do not know. But 
I'm just going to click it right now. I'm going to press OK. I'm press OK again. File, export, movie. I'm going to override it. Yes. And if I go to After Effects right now, you can see it actually moves once again. So if you find yourself looking at a frozen Swift file animation in After Effects, be sure to turn on Optimize for After Effects in the Publish settings. So there's one more thing that I want to show you guys, and that's how to open Swift files in your file explorer. I'll show you right now. So if I go to my folder, I can see the Swift file right here. And there's a really good chance that this has like an unidentified file format. Uh, Windows does not know automatically what to do with this. And if I open it up, you may see a window like this. Now in my case, I already selected this Adobe Flash Player. 11.4 if it does not you do not have to look for the app in the Microsoft Store I'm just gonna click on more apps right there I'm going to scroll down and if it's not there I'll say look for another app on this PC and I'll show you where I can find that little program to open Swift files because it does come with Adobe animate I'm gonna go to Adobe Adobe animate 2022 in this case or whatever version you're working on I got players right there and right there it says flash player so if i select that it will open in that format i can press ctrl f if i want to full screen it escape to get out of it or double click this little bar and it will show me everything so now i can preview those files in windows explorer so that's all for today guys i hope you learned something if you have any questions be sure to leave a comment or join the discord with a link in the description I'll see you there. Be sure to watch the Dick Pikachu Noir short if you haven't already. I'll put it in the end credits. And um, see you later. Bye-bye.